Our world is filled with majesty, some of which can only truly be appreciated from the highest possible perspectives. The reality is most people will never allow themselves to get there, limiting their own exploration to the views they can find at their fingertips. Eric Sievertson, on the other hand, can't stop climbing. There's just this sense of discovery and, and, and pioneering that I just have never gotten away from. I want to discover something. I want to witness a sunrise that I've never seen or see a mountain that I've never seen. And it's just that driving force, that desire to see something and, and seek adventure in a very controlled world uh, that, that drives me to keep doing this and, and excites me to, to go get my next peak. Sievertson's story began in Aberdeen, South Dakota, elevation 1302. It was there that he became a second generation Boy Scout, which only enhanced his natural affection for the outdoors. It was, it was really cool as I progressed because I got to experience more of like kayaking, uh, zip lining, and I got a little taste of climbing and got a few mountains uh, that I got close to and I'm like, gosh, I wonder what it's like to do that. The answer to that question came in 2009. Sievertson got an unexpected call from an old friend who invited him to tag along on a trip to Colorado. Sievertson accepted and his life took on a whole new trajectory. What I learned is that I was, I was really good at actually doing this. I wasn't affected by altitude. Um, I was physically fit enough that I could really accomplish these. But certainly when we were there, the experiences that I had with my friends and uh, the natural beauty and all the things that you come to, to expect from pictures and the things that you see, being there witnessing that was just an amazing experience. So if my friend had never made that call, I don't know if I would I'd be into this sport, but as soon as I was there, I knew, man, this is something that I just love and I, I, I can't get enough of it. Over the years, Sievertson's obsession has led to consistently incredible climbs, including Washington's Mount Rainier, which remains one of his personal favorites. It was a huge challenge, it took three days to climb. We had to work as a team with ropes, and so it was my first major like glaciation experience. The sheer beauty of this mountain is just breathtaking. I mean, the views you see, it almost becomes like a religious experience to me uh, because of everything that you experience through natural wonder and, and the beauty of what you hold as you're doing that. Experiences like that provided the foundation for a couple of lofty goals. One of those is contained in Colorado, which is home to 58 peaks above 14,000 feet otherwise known as 14ers. By the end of 2020, Sievertson had scaled 11 of them, but he wants them all. Most of the ones that people have seen me do or post about or, or explain have been some of the entry level ones. So this next year and, and probably in the next three years, I'm gonna start taking on some really challenging peaks and there's some really, really hard ones that you really have to be ready to do and wait for the perfect conditions. The other item on Sievertson's wish list is something that's reserved for the truly elite. The tallest mountains on each of the seven continents are collectively known as the Seven Summits. Roughly 500 people have managed to reach the top of all of them. Sievertson officially began his quest on Africa's Mount Kilimanjaro in January of 2019. It was such an amazing experience because it takes just over a week to climb and to come back down. So that's the longest experience I've ever been on. Um, but basically you go through seven different climate zones to get to the top. So you're experiencing all these different things and all these different uh, environments that you have to endure. And the culture, just being in a different country, seeing how the cultures have been built around this humongous structure. I mean, I just learned so much from that. So I think Kilimanjaro is just has a real special place in my heart. It also added a little extra fuel to Sievertson's internal fire. With one summit in the bag, he quickly set his sights on the next one. Aconcagua is the highest mountain you can climb outside of the Himalayas. It's in Argentina, and I'm super excited to climb that one. Sievertson originally planned to tackle it late last year, but travel restrictions related to the COVID-19 pandemic pushed the target back to December of 2021. Training for such endeavors can be difficult in a vertically challenged state like South Dakota, but Sievertson always makes the most of what's available. When he's not biking, kayaking, or running, he's trying to achieve as much altitude gain as possible 
at places like Great Bear Recreation Park near Sioux Falls. Climbing up uh, uh, the ski lift in the snow at four in the morning, a lot of the guys who are grooming that are kind of looking at me like, is this person crazy? The answer is probably yes, that's fine. <laughs> I've, I've learned to live with that. All kidding aside, things will start to ramp up pretty quickly, with Sievertson seeking out some more arduous training opportunities. I plan to do a winter 14er. I haven't done one yet. That is a lot more challenging than the summertime, uh, so certainly have to be ready for that. And then I should probably get at least five to ten other mountains under my belt so that I can be ready uh, really for that crescendo at the end of the year, which is which is Aconcagua, which would be my second seven summit. So look forward to that as long as we can get travel back on the, on the plate. While that still feels like a big if, mountain climbers are used to unpredictable conditions. The bottom line is an adventure can't start without a plan. And as Sievertson said during TEDx Sioux Falls last fall, putting those plans into action is the only way to turn dreams into realities. Take the first step and embark on your journey. But make haste, my friends. Don't wait too long, because if you do, you run the risk of leaving this world with a head full of plans and no scars to show for it. Thank you. And joined by Jay Elson. All right, Jay, the, you go Google the seven summits. This is some serious and dangerous climbing, right? Yeah. Is, there any, is there anywhere that Eric might not want to go? Well, I mean, you're right. It does take a, a fair amount of courage to go out and, and attempt these things. And, and that's why one of the reasons why he says you have to be ready to fail. And in fact, sometimes you have to choose to fail because it is a matter of safety. Do you want to go home to your family at night? Well, his family is at the root of this. And currently, uh, his wife does not want him to climb Mount Everest. So that's the sticking point because, of course, that's one of the seven summits. It's a goal. He's not ready to give up on that goal. He's still working on that, but currently yeah. it's a no-go. But it is literally life or death for some people oh, when, you, when you attempt these things. People right? die on these mountains all the time, and so that's something that's it's a very real possibility when you go up. And it doesn't matter. You could be on a 14 in, 14er in Colorado. You could be out uh, West River in South Dakota. If one thing goes wrong, it's all it takes. So it's definitely something you have to be very conscious of and, and as I said, willing to fail or even willing to choose to fail. All right. Good for him. Thanks a lot. Jay Elson.